and welcome to Freedom Is Mine. Now before we get into the nitty gritty, let's kick off this video with a quick test. Here is a picture of the popular K-pop group TWICE. Of their nine members, six are South Korean, two are Japanese and one hails from Taiwan. Can you tell me who is from where? For many of us, that could be a challenge. The reason for this is known as the cross-race effect, also called the other race effect a scientific phenomenon whereby we are much worse at distinguishing between people of different races to our own. A famous example was when news reporter Sam Rubin mistook Samuel L. Jackson for Lawrence Fishburne on live television, asking him a question about his recent Super Bowl commercial. Did you get a lot of reaction to that Super Bowl commercial? What Super Bowl commercial? You know what? I've been my mistake. I, you know see what? what? See, you're you're as crazy as the people on Twitter. Right. I'm not Lawrence Fishburne. <laughs> That's my fault. Oh, I know boy. that. That was my fault. Uh, my mistake. You know what? We don't oh. all look alike. So, oh, you're oh, exactly right. all black and famous. You but are we all guilty. Don't look alike. I am. I Safe to say, it's one of the most excruciating moments in live television history, but also a key example of the cross-race effect in action. There are two main theories as to why the cross-race effect happens. The first is that we're better able to distinguish between people from races that we have the most direct contact with, which is usually our own. In other words, the more time you spend interacting with people from a particular race, the better able you are to distinguish between them. Different races also have different physiognomic variability. For example, there's a lot of variation in hair colour between Caucasians, but less variation in skin tone. By contrast, there's lots of variation in skin tone between black people, but less variation in hair colour. How we learn to recognise people has a lot to do with the variations that we look for among that racial category. The second theory is that people are less prone to code faces of people from different ethnicities. We pay less attention to their individual features than we do for people of our own race. We perceive immediately that they are different from us and that they are from a particular race, but we effectively tune out the fine details of their characteristics. This is partly the psychological effect of how we respond to in-groups and out-groups. An in-group is a group that we personally identify as a member of. For example, we may more readily connect with, relate to, and humanise people of our own race. However, with people from out-groups, in this case other races that we're less familiar with, we tend to categorise them and lump them together, regardless of the fact that there is just as much variety among their race as amongst ours. Incidentally, it's completely wrong to suggest that some races are more homogenous than others. There is proven to be significant physiognomic variation among people of all races. Contrary to what you might think, the cross-race effect is not inherently racist. Racial attitudes do not determine how apt a person is at distinguishing people of other races. For example, a white slave trader in the 1800s may have been very adept at distinguishing between black faces because he spent so much time around enslaved Africans. That doesn't exempt him from being considered a racist. Many of you may have struggled to differentiate between the members of the K-pop group in our initial test, but that does not by default make you a racist either. The cross-race effect does become highly problematic though when it comes to using eyewitness accounts to convict criminals. History has shown that hundreds of people have been wrongly convicted of crimes and sometimes executed due to being misidentified because of the cross-race effect. This has become particularly apparent as advances in DNA testing have helped exonerate hundreds of innocent people. One high-profile example is that of Cornelius Dupree, who was wrongly imprisoned for 30 years for aggravated robbery in which he was alleged to have abducted a young couple, robbed them at gunpoint and raped the female victim. In 2010, DNA testing revealed that he had not committed the crime and he was subsequently released. Needless to say, other victims of misidentification who have been wrongly convicted have not had the opportunity to prove their innocence. That leads us to the question, are there ways to prevent the cross-race effect? Absolutely! <laughs> if the cross-race effect is a symptom of being unfamiliar with other races, then the answer is to have as much contact with people of other races as possible. The internet is your friend. Get online and start to explore as much about other races as you can. That's it from me, guys. See you next time. Freedom is